persuade me not. I will make a star chamber matter of it. Were he twenty Sir John Falstaffs, he shall not abuse Roberta Shallow Esquire. In the county of Gloucestershire, justice of peace and a gentlewoman born. But if Sir John Falstaff has committed disparagements unto you, I am of the church and will be glad to do my benevolence to make atonement and compromises between you. And there is another device in my brain which prays that judge brings good discretion with it. There is Anne Page, which is daughter to Master George Page, which is pretty virginity. Mistress Anne Page, she has brown hair and speaks small like a woman. And seven hundred pounds of money, <clears throat> and gold and silver is her grandsire's upon his deathbed. God deliver to her joyful resurrections. Give when she is able to overtake seventeen years old. It were a good motion if we leave our prayers and prabbles and desire a marriage between Master Abraham and Mistress Anne Page. I know the young gentlewoman. She has good gifts. Well, let us see, honest Master Page. Is Sir John false? Staff coming here. Uh, the knight Sir John has got the link, and I beseech you be ruled by your well willers. I will text Master Page. Uh, what ho? God bless your host here. Who's there? Oh, here is God's blessing, and your friend, and uh, there's Justice Shallow, and here is young Master Slender, which uh, pre adventure shall tell another tale if matters shall grow to your liking. I'm glad to see your worships well. I thank you for my venison, Mistress Shallow, and I'm glad to see you, good Master Slender. Master Page, I'm glad to see you. Much good do it to your good heart. I had wished your venison better. It was ill-killed. How doth good Mistress Page? Is Sir John Falstaff coming here? Mistress, he is within. I would. I could do a good office between you. Uh, to spoke as Christian ought to speak. He hath wronged me, Master Page. Oh, Mistress, he doth in some sort confess it. What's up then? <laughs> <laughs> All right, bar down, Stone. <laughs> yes, best of lad. Now, Mistress Shallow, you'll complain of me to the king. Knight, you have beaten my men, killed my deer, and broke open my lodge. But not kissed your keeper's daughter. Tut up in. This shall be answered. I will answer it. I have done all this. That is now answered. <laughs> oh, Slender, I broke your head. What matter of you against me? Mary, sir, I have matter in my head against you. In your only catching rascals, Bardolph and Pistol, they carried me to a tavern and made me drunk. And afterward, it's my pocket. <laughs> you Bambury cheese. Uh, peace, I pay you. Now let us understand, there is three umpires in this as I understand, that is Master Page, the delicate Master Page, there is myself, the delicate myself, and the three party is lastly and finally mine hostess of the garter. Ah, we three to hear it and end it between them. Pistol, he hears with ears. Pistol, did you pick Master Slender's purse? Uh, no, tis false if he is a pick purse. <laughs> Thou melting foreigner, Sir John, a master of mine, I can't but challenge this Latin Bilbo. Word of the annoyal, froth and scum, thou liest. All right, well then by these gloves, then twas he. <laughs> Be advised, sir, and pass good humours. Well, by this hat, then he in the red face had done it. Although I cannot remember what I did when they made me drunk, yet I am not altogether an arse. What say you, Scarlet and John? Why, sir, on my part, I'd say the gentleman had drunk himself past his five senses. <laughs> it is his five senses. Five, what the ignorance is! I'll ne'er be drunk again whilst I live. But in, in honest, godly, civil company for this trick. And if I be drunk, I'll be drunk with those that have the fear of God in them, not with some drunken knaves. So God judge me, that is a virtuous mind. You hear all these matters denied, ladies and gentlemen. You hear it. Nay, daughter, carry the wine in. We'll drink within. Oh, heaven. This is Mistress Anne Page. Oh, how now, Mistress Ford? 
Mistress Ford, by my troth, you are very well met. By your leave, good mistress. Wife, bid these gentlemen welcome. Come, we have a hot venison pasty to dinner. I hope we shall drink down all unkindness. Come, cuz. Come, cuz. We stay for you. Marry this, cuz. A word with you. The question is concerning your marriage to Mistress Anne Page. Why, I will marry her upon any reasonable demand. Uh, but can you affection the woman? Let us command to know that of your mouth or of your lips. For the divers philosophers hold that the lips is the parcel of the mouth. Cousin Abraham Slender, can you love her? I will marry her, my lady, at your request. But if there be no great love in the beginning, yet heaven may decrease it upon better acquaintance when we are married and have more occasion to know one another. Tis very discretion answer. Its meaning is good. Here comes fair Mistress Anne. Would I were young for your sake, Mistress Anne? The dinner's on the table, so... Gods, please, will I? will not be absent, have the grace. You all right, Mistress Anne? How's it going? You hang up first. No, you hang up. Mistress Anne, yourself shall go first. Not I, sir. Pray you, keep on. Uh, truly, I will not go first. La! I will not do you that wrong. I pray you, sir. I'd rather be unmannerly than troublesome. You do yourself wrong indeed. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Hans. How are you doing? I was just wondering what you guys would think about if I started making a makeup YouTube channel because it's such a passion of mine and I love it so much. And I'm actually really good. Oh my. Go your ways and ask of Dr. Kaiser's house, which is the way. And there dwells one mistress quickly, huh? which is in the manner of his nurse. Or his dry nurse. Or his cook. His laundry, his washer, or his ringer. You're on mute, boy. Well, my lady. <laughs> Nay, it is better yet. Give her this letter, for it is a woman who's altogether acquainted with Mistress Anne Page. The letter is to desire and require her to solicit your master's desires to Mistress Anne Page. Simple. Mistress Anne Page. Now, I pray you, be gone. I will make an end of my dinner. There is pippins and cheese to come. of you know Ford of this town? I can the like. He is of substance good. Ah, uh, my honest lads, I will tell you what I am about. Briefly, I do intend to make love to Ford's wife. I spy entertainment in her. She discourses, she carves, she gives the leer of invitation. I can construe the action of her familiar style, and the hardest voice of her behaviour, to be English rightly, is I am Sir John Falstaff. <laughs> he hath studied her well and translated her well out of honesty into English. Now, the report goes she has all the rule of her husband's purse. He hath a legion of angels. As many devils entertain. The humour rises, it is good. Humour me the angels. I have writ me here a letter to her, and here another to Paige's wife, who even now gave me good eyes too, examined my parts with most judicious holy arts. Sometimes the beam of her view gilded my foot, sometimes my portly belly. Before <laughs> uh, yeah. oh, yes. Oh, she did so coarse her my exteriors with such a greedy intention that the appetite of her eye did seem to scorch me up like a burning glass. <laughs> Here is another letter to her. She holds the purse too. 
She is a region in Guiana, all gold and bounty. I will be cheaters to them both, and they shall be exchequers to me. They shall be my East and West Indies, and I will trade to them both. Go, bear thou this letter to Mistress Page, and thou this letter to Mistress Ford. We will thrive, lads, we will thrive. Shall I Sir Pandarus of Troy be come, and by my side wear steel? Then Lucifer take all. I will run no base humour here. Take the humour letter. I will keep the haviour of reputation. Hold, missus. Bear you these letters tightly. Sail like my pinnace to these golden shores. Rogues hence avaunt. Vanish like hailstones. Go. Trudge. Plumb the hoof. Seek shelter. Pack. Falstaff will learn the humour of the age. French thrift, you rogues. Myself and skirted page. How do you turn the bloody thing off? Let vultures gripe thy goods. I have operations which be humours of revenge. Wilt thou revenge? With wit or with steel? With both the humours. I will discuss the humour of this love to Page. And I to Ford shall eke unfold how false that varlet vile. His dove will prove, his gold will hold, and his soft couch defile. Oh, I, I'm sorry they didn't cast you, Slender. Yes, but you know, to be on the beach, I believe you have to have an ex. What? John Rugby. I pray thee, go to the casement and see if you can see my mistress coming, Mistress Dr. Caius. If she do, I'll say, then find anybody in the house. He will be an old abusing of God's patience and the King's English. I'll go watch. Peter Simple. Peter Simple, you say your name is? You're on mute. Aye, forsooth. <laughs> and Master Slender's your master? Aye, forsooth. Oh, I should remember him. Does he not? I hold his head up as it were and strut in his gait. La! <laughs> yes, indeed, does he? Well, heaven sent and page no worse fortune. Tell your mistress, Parson Evans, I will do what I can for your master. Anne is a good girl, and I wish. Out! Alas, here comes my master! We shall all be shent! Run in there, good young man. Get into the closet. Closet? Go on, get into the closet. She will not stay long. Go on, go. Come on, get in there. I pray you, go and fetch me in my closet a boiture rouge. A box, a red box. Do you intend what I speak, a red box? I, I forsooth, I'll fetch it for you. I'm glad she went not in herself. If she had found the young man, she would have been all mad. Is it this, miss? Oui. <laughs> Depeche, quickly. Where is that nail from B? Here, mademoiselle. <laughs> Come. Take your rapier and come after my heel to guard. It is ready, mademoiselle, here in the porch. Ah, my throat ain't tarry too long. Ozzy, what do you want? There is some simples in my closet that I will not for a world I shall eat the end. Why me? She'll find the young man in there and be mad. So <laughs> you. What is in my closet? Lily, Lavon, Oh no. Good mistress, be content. Wherefore shall I be content? The young man is an honest man. What shall the honest man do in my closet? 
There is no honest man that shall go in my closet. I beseech you, hear the truth of it. He came of an errand to me from passing you. Well? Aye, forsooth, to desire her too. Peace, I pray you. Peace, are you done? Speak your dare. To desire her too, this honest, gentle woman, your maid, to speak a good word to mistress and page for my master in the way of marriage. Lady Hugh send you. Oh. you a little while. I'm glad she is so quiet. If she had been truly moved, you would have heard her so loud and so melancholy. But notwithstanding, man, I'll do you, your master, what good I can. For the very yea and the no of it is, my mistress, Mistress Dr. Caius, I may call her my mistress, for I keep her house. I wash, ring, bake, brew, scour, dress the meat and the drink, make the beds, and do all myself. But notwithstanding, to tell you in your ear, I'll hear no word of it. My mistress herself is in love with Mistress Anne Page. But notwithstanding that, I know Anne's mind, and that's neither here nor there. <coughs> you, Jack Nip, show this message to Lady Hugh. Begar, it is a challenge. I will cut her throat in the park. I will teach a scurvy jackanip priest to meddle or make. You made it good. Not good, you dare ear. Alas, she speaks before a friend. It is no matter where that. Do not you tell me that I shall have an page. <laughs> I got. I will kill the Jack priest. And I have appointed my hostess de Jardin to measure our weapon. I got. I will myself have an page. Miss, the maid loves you. All shall be well. What the good year! It Come to the court with me. Bagar, if I have not an page for myself, I will turn your head out of my door. Probably follow my ears. You shall have an for marriage. You will have an false head of your own. No, I know Anne's mind for that. Never a woman in Windsor knew Anne's mind more than I do, nor can do more than I do with her. I oh, thank heaven. How now, good woman? How dost thou? The bear that it pleases your worship to ask. What news? How does pretty mistress Anne? Well, in truth, she is pretty and honest and gentle and one that is your friend. I could tell you that, by the way. I praise heaven for it. Shall I do any good, thinkest thou? Shall I not lose my suit? In troth, sir, all is in his hands above, but... Notwithstanding, Master Fenton, I'll be sworn on a book she loves you. Oh, well, I shall see her today. Hold, there's money for thee. Let me have thy voice in my behalf. If thou seest her before me, commend me. Will I? Our faith, that we will. Well, farewell. I am in great haste now. Farewell to your worship. Truly an honest gentleman. Alter Pont, what have I forgot? of my beauty, and am I now subject for them? <laughs> well, let me see. <laughs> Dear Mistress Page, ask me no reason why I love you, 
For though love use reason for his precision, he admits him not for his counsellor. <laughs> you are not young. No more am I. Go to their sympathy. You are merry, so am I. Ha ha, then there's more sympathy. You love sack, and so do I. Would you desire better sympathy? Let it suffice thee, Mistress Page, at the least if the love of a soldier can suffice, that I love thee. I will not say pity me, tis not a soldier-like phrase, but I say love me by me, thine own true knight by day or night, or any kind of light with all his might for thee to fight John For John Falstaff? Oh, wicked, wicked world! Well, one that is well nigh worn to pieces with age to show himself a young gallant. <laughs> What an unweighed behaviour hath this Flemish drunkard picked from my conversation that he dares assay me in this manner? <laughs> I have not been thrice in his company. But what should I say? Well, I was frugal of my mirth then, heaven forgive me. Oh, God. why? I'll exhibit a bill in Parliament for the putting down of men. <laughs> Oh, how shall I be revenged on him? For revenged I will be, as sure as his guts are made of puddings. Mistress Page, trust me, I was giving you a call. Mistress Page, give me your counsel. Oh, trust me, woman, I was going to call you. What's the matter? Here, yeah. read. Read. I shall think worse of fat men as long as I have an eye to make difference of men's liking. What, Tempest? I trove through this whale with so many tons of oil in his belly ashore at Windsor. How shall I be revenge on him? I think the best way were to entertain him with hope until the wicked fire of lust have melted him in his own grease. Have you ever had the like? Letter for letter, but that the name of page and four differs. <laughs> to thy great comfort in this mystery of ill opinions, here is the twin brother of thy letter. <laughs> I warrant he hath writ a thousand of these letters, writ with a blank space for a different name. <laughs> well, I will find you twenty lascivious turtles ere one chaste man. <laughs> Why, this is the very same, the very hand, the very words. What doth he think of us? Nay, I know not. <laughs> Let's be revenged on him. <laughs> Let's um, appoint him a meeting, uh, give him a show of comfort in his suit, and lead him on with fine, mm, baited, mm, delay, till he hath pawned his horses to mine hostess of the garter. <laughs> Nay, I will consent to act any villainy against him that shall not sully the chubbiness of our honesty. Oh, of course. <laughs> My husband saw this letter. Oh. It would give eternal food to his jealousy. Oh, why look. He is in the waiting room, and my good man too. He is as far from jealousy as I am from giving him cause for it, and that, I hope, is an unmeasurable distance. <laughs> you are the happier woman. Come, let's consult together against this greasy night. I hope it be not so. And hope is a careful dog in some affairs. Sir John affects thy wife. Why, sir? My wife is not young. He woos both high and low, both rich and poor. Both young and old, one with another, Fort. He loves the Gallimaufry. Fort per pen. Love, my wife. Woo, with liver burning hot. Prevent, or go thou like Sir Acte on he with Ringwood at thy heels. Farewell. Take heed, have open eye for thieves to foot by night. Away, Sir Corporal Pistol. <laughs> Believe it, Page, he speaks sense. I will be patient. I will find out this. <laughs> and this is true. I like not the humour of lying. He hath wronged me in some humours. Oh, I should have borne the human letter to her, but 
I ever saw than it shall bite upon my necessity. He loves your wife. There's the short and the long. My name is Corporal Bardolph. I speak and I avouch tis true. My name is Bardolph and Falstaff loves your wife. Ah, you. I love not the humour of bread and cheese. Ooh, and there's the humour of it. Ah, you. Here's a fellow frights English out of his wits. I never heard such a drooling, affecting rogue. T'was a good, sensible fellow. Well, I will seek out Falstaff. How now, Meg? Fuck <laughs> oh, you, George, I'm gonna kill you! <laughs> How now, sweet Frank? Why art thou melancholy? I? Melancholy? I'm not melancholy. Go. We're 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 having man talk. Faith, thou hast some crotchets in thy head now. You go, Mistress Page. I'll have with you. You'll come to dinner, George. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 look who's calling. Mistress, quickly. She shall be our messenger to this um, paltry night. <laughs> you are come to see my daughter, Anne. Hmm? Hey, forsooth. And I pray, how does good Mistress Anne? Oh. Well, uh, go in with us and see. We will have an hour's talk with you. How now, Master Ford? You heard what this knave told me, did you not? Hang them, slaves. I do not think the knight would offer it. But these that accuse him in his intent towards our wives are a yoke of his discarded men. Very rogues, now they'd be out of service. Were they his men? Marry, were they? I like it never the better for that. Does he lie at the garter? Ah, marry, does he? If he should intend this voyage toward my wife, uh, I would turn her loose to him, and what he gets more of her than sharp words, let it lie upon my head. I do not misdoubt my wife, but I would be loath to turn them together. A man may be too confident. I would have nothing lie on my head. I cannot be thus satisfied. Oh. Look where my ranting hostess of the gut comes. There's either liquor in her pate or money in her purse when she looks so merrily. How now, my hostess? How now, Bully Rook? Thou art a gentleman. Cavalier Justice, I say. Come, tell him, Cavalier Justice. Tell him, Bully Rook. Sirs, there is a fray to be fought between Lady Hugh, the Welsh priest, and Caius, the French doctor. <laughs> good mine hostess of the garter. A word with you? Will you go with us to behold it? My merry hostess hath had the measuring of both their weapons, and I think hath appointed them contrary places. <laughs> For believe me, I hear the parson is no jester. <laughs> Hark, I will tell you what our sport shall be. Still against my nun, my guest Cavaliero. Mum, I protest. But I'll give you a pottle of burnt sack if you give me recourse to him and tell him my name is Brooke. Only for jest. <laughs> you, you're freezing, you're frozen. My hand, thy name shall be Brooke. It is a merry night. Will you go, Amiz? Have with you, mine hostess. Have with you. I had rather hear them scold than fight. <laughs> Big Daddy 69, log one. Though Paige be a secure fool, to stand so firmly on his wife's frailty, yet I cannot put off my own opinion so easily. She was in his company at Paige's house, and what they made there. 
I know not. Well, I'll look further into it. And I have disguised the sound full stuff. If I find her honest, I lose not my neighbour. If she be otherwise, tis labour well bestowed. Big Daddy 6 9, over and out. And out. He's a woman would speak with you. Let her approach. Give your worship good morrow. Good morrow, good wife. Not so, ain't please your worship. Good maid then. I'll be sworn, as my mother was the first hour I was born. I do believe the swearer. What with me? There is one Mistress Ford. I myself dwell with Mistress Dr. Caius. Well, on Mistress Ford, you say? Why, she's a good creature. Lord, Lord, your worships are wanton. God forgive you and all of us, I pray. Mistress Ford, come, Mistress Ford. Marry, sir, this is the short end, the long of it. You have brought her to such a canary as tis wonderful. The best courtier of them all, when the court lay at Windsor, could never bring her to such a canary. And yet, there has been knights and lords and gentlemen with their coaches. I warrant you, coach after coach, letter after letter, gift after gift, smelling so sweetly, all musk and so rustling, in such silk and gold, in such elegant terms, in such wine and sugar of the best and the fairest that would have won over any woman's art. But yet, they could never so much get an eye wink out of her. And yet there has been earls, but I warrant you, all is one with her. But I pray thee, tell me this. Mm. But what says she to me? Be brief, my good she Mercury. Marry, sir, she hath received your letters, for which she thanks you a thousand times, and gives you to notify that her husband will be absent from his house between ten and eleven. Ten and eleven. I forsooth. Then you may come see that picture she says you what of. Master Ford, her husband will be from home. Alas, the sweet woman leads an ill life with him. He's a very jealousy man. Ten and eleven. Woman, commend me to her. I will not fail her. Ah, oh, you say well, but I have another messenger for your worship. Mistress Page hath her hearty commendations to you too, and to tell you in your ear, she's as fartuous as civil modest wife and one, I tell you, and she bade me tell your worship that her husband is seldom from home, but she hopes there will come a time. Uh, but I pray thee, tell me this, has Ford's wife and Page's wife acquainted each other how they love me? <laughs> that were a jest indeed. They have not so little grace, I hope. That were a trick indeed. Fare thee well, commend me to them both. There's my purse, I am yet thy debtor. Uh, <clears throat> I don't know. Um, where's it? Sir John, there's one Master Brook below would fain speak with you and be acquainted with you and have sent your worship a morning's draught of sack. Brook is his name. Aye, sir. Call it in. Such brooks are welcome to me that overflow such liquor. <laughs> Mistress Ford and Mistress Page, have I encompassed you? No, to dear. <laughs> Bless you, sir. And you, sir, you're welcome. What's your will? Sir, I am a gentleman that have spent much. My name is Brooke. There is a bag of money here troubles me. If you will help to bear it, Sir John, take all or half for easing me of the carriage. Sir, I know not how I deserve to be your porter. 
There is a gentlewoman in this town. Her husband's name is Ford. Uh -huh. I have long loved her. Briefly, I have pursued her as love hath pursued me, which hath been on the wing of all occasions. But whatsoever I have merited, either in my mind or in my means, me that I am sure, I have received none, unless experience be a jewel. <laughs> Of uh, what quality was your love, then? Like a fair house built on another man's ground, so that I have lost my edifice by mistaking the place where I erected it. Uh, of what purpose have you unfolded this to me? When I have told you that, I have told you all. Some say that though she appear honest to me, yet in other places she enlargeth her mouth so far that there is shrewd construction made of her. Now, Sir John, here is the heart of my purpose. You are a gentleman, reading admirable discourse of great admittance, generally allowed for your many warlike, court-like, and learned preparations. Oh, sir. <laughs> Believe it, for you know it. Here is money. Spend it. Spend it. Spend more. Spend all I have. Only give me so much of your time in exchange as to lay an amiable siege to the honesty of this Ford's wife. Would it, would it apply well to the vehemency of your affection that I should win what you would enjoy? Methinks you prescribe to yourself very preposterously. Oh, understand my drift! She dwells so securely on the excellency of her honour that the folly of my soul dares not present itself. She, she's too bright to be looked against. Now, could I come with some detection in my hand, my desires would have instance and argument to commend themselves. I could derive her then from the ward of her purity, her reputation, her marriage vow, and a thousand other defences which now are too too strongly embattled against me. What say you to it, Sir John? Master Brook, I will first make bold with your money. Next, as I <laughs> next, give me your hand, and as I am last, as I am a gentleman, you shall, if you will, enjoy Ford's wife. Oh, good sir! I say you shall. I shall be with her, I may tell you, between ten and eleven, for at that time the jealous rascally knave, her husband, will be forth. Come you to me at night, you shall know how I speed. <laughs> I am blessed in your acquaintance. Do you know Ford, sir? <laughs> I am knave. <laughs> uh, I know him not. Yet I wrong him to call him poor. They say the jealous wittily knave hath masses of money for the which his wife seems to me well favoured. I will use her as the key of the cuckoldy rogue's coffer, and there's my harvest home. <laughs> I would do new for it, sir, that you might avoid him if you saw him. Hang ye, mechanical salt butter rogue. For the knave, and I will aggravate his style. Thou, Master Brook, shalt know him for a knave and a cuckold. <laughs> Come to me at night. <laughs> Big Daddy Six Nine Log Two. What a damned epicurean rascal is this? My heart is ready to crack with impatience. Who said this was improvident jealousy? This is what it's like to have a false woman. My bed will be abused, my coffers ransacked, my reputation gnawn at. Paige is an ass, a secure ass. He will trust his wife, he will not be jealous. Well, God be praised for my jealousy. At 11 o'clock the hour, I will prevent this. Detect my wife, be revenged on Falstaff and laugh at Paige. I will about it. Better three hours too soon than a second too late. Ugh, fie! 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 A cuckold! A cuckold! A cuckold! 
Big Daddy 6 9 Over and out. Anne? Is that you, Anne? Annie, are you okay? Annie, can you tell me if you're okay? Mademoiselle. What is the clock, Jacques? It is past the hour, Mademoiselle. That lady who promised to meet. Very girl. She has said her soul that she is no gun. She has played her people well that she is no gun. Very girl, Jacques will be. She'd be dead already if she'd be gun. She is wise, Mademoiselle. She knew your worship would kill her if she can. Very girl. The Aryan is no dead, so as I will kill her. Oh, here's company. Yes, Stevely Doctor. Save you, Mistress Doctor Caius. Uh, now, good Mistress Doctor. Give you good morrow, my lady. What be you all? One, two, three, four, come for? To see thee fart. To see thee foin. To see thee traverse, to see thee here, to see thee there, to see thee pass thy punto. Oh, punto. Thy stock. Stock. Thy reverse. Reverse. Thy distance. Distance. Thy montant. Montant. Is she dead, Billy Stale? Is she dead? Thy girl. She is the coward Jack Priest of the world. She is not sure her face. She is the wiser woman, Mistress Doctor. She is a curer of souls, and you, a curer of bodies. Should you fight, you go against the hair of your professions. Is it not true? Pardon, guest justice. The words, madame? Hello. But first. Master Guest, Master Page, and eke Cavaliero Slender, go you through the town to Frogmore. Mistress Hugh is there, is she? <laughs> she is there. See what humour she is in, and I will bring the doctor about by the fields. Will it do well? We will do it. Adieu, good mistress doctor. Yes. Thank you. I will kill the Jack Priest. For she speak for her jack nape to Anne Page. Let her die. Sheath thy impatience. Throw cold water on thy collar. Go about the fields with me through Frogmore, and I will bring thee where Mistress Anne Page is, in a farmhouse a feasting, and thou shalt woo her. Cried game. Says I will. My dear, we thank you for that. My dear, I love you. Let us wag then. Jacobi, come at my heels. Starting route to Frogmore House. Let's see what Slender's up to. Yeah, I'm a room, I'm bigger than Pitbull. for Lady Caius who calls herself Dr. Fezek. Oh, come on, simply, you're on mute, boy. Let's go, let's go. Oh, married me, lady. The pity was, the park was. Every way all winds away, and every way but the town way. Oh, oh bless my soul. How oh, full of call as I am. I'm trembling of mind. Oh, I shall be glad if she has deceived me. Oh, how melancholy as I am. I will not get you who knows about her name's costard when I have good opportunities for the orc. Mm. Oh, bless my soul. Oh, wonder she is coming this way, Lady Hugh. She is welcome. What weapons is she? No weapons, my lady. How now, Mistress Parson? Good morrow, good Lady Hugh. Ah, uh, sweet Anne Page. Uh. <laughs> We are come to do you a good office, Mistress Parson. Very well. What is it? Yonder is a most reverend gentlewoman who, belike, having received wrong by some person, is at most odds with her own gravity and patience that ever you saw. 
Mistress Dr. Caius, the renowned French physician. God's will and passion of my heart. I had his life, you would tell me, of a mess of pottage. Oh, <laughs> sweet. Sweet and page. Keep them asunder. Here, here comes Dr. Caius. Nay, good Mistress Parson, keeping your weapon. Also, do you, good Mistress Doctor? Disarm them and let them question. Let them keep their limbs whole and hack our English. I pray you, let me speak a word with your ear. Wherefore will you not meet me? I pray you, use your patience in good time. It was a coward, the jet dog, jet ape. Oh, pray you, let us not be laughing stocks to other men's humours. I desire you a friendship, and I will, one way or other, make you amends. I will nod your urinals about your name's corpse combs for missing your meetings and appointments. Oh, diable! My hostess de Jacquier! I will not stay with her to kill her. I will not at the place I did the point. As I am a Christian soul now, look you, this is the place appointed, and I'll be judgment by mine hostess of the gutter. Peace, I say. French and Welsh. Soul curer and body curer. Hear mine hostess of the gutter. Uh, hear, hear. Shall I lose my doctor? No! She gives me the potions and the motions. And shall I lose my parson? My priest? My mistress? You! No! She gives me the proverbs and the no verbs. <laughs> oh, girls of art, I have deceived you both. I have sent you to wrong places. Your hearts are mighty, your skin's a whole. Let burnt sack be thy issue. Come, lay their swords to pawn. Trust me, a mad house. Ha, do I perceive that? Have you made a suit of us? Ha, ha. This is well, she has made us a routing stog. I desire you that we may be friends. Oh, by God, with all my art. I think we're alone now. Doesn't seem to be anyone around. Hey, Slender, I love you. I love you too, Anne. And I'm sick of feeling empty and alone, and I can't wait to make you mine. Oh, sweet, sweet. Sweet and page. <laughs>
If ye take her, let me take her simply. The wealth I have waits on my consent, and my consent goes not that way. I beseech you heartily. Some of you go home with me to dinner. Besides your cheer, you shall have sport. I will show you a monster. Mistress Doctor, you shall go. So shall you, Master Page, and you, Lady Hugh. Well, fare you well. We shall have the freer wooing at Master Page's. <coughs> Farewell, my hearts. I will to my honest knight Falstaff and drink canary with him. Drink. <laughs> I think I shall drink him pipe wine first with him. Drink. I'll make him dance. <laughs> will you go, gentles? Have with you to see this monster. Ooh, have with you. A tout à l'heure. If I were a rich man. Come on. What, John? What, Robert? Oh, quickly, quickly, quickly. Is the basket ready? <gasps> A warrant. What, Robert, I say? Oh, come, 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 come. Give your men the charge. We must be brief. Harry, <laughs> oh. as I told you before, John and Robert, be ready here hard by in the brew house. And when I call you, come forth. Without any pause or staggering, take this basket on your shoulders. That's done. Trudge with it in all haste and carry it among the whiskers in Datchet Mead. And there, empty the basket into the muddy ditch close by the tame side. <laughs> Be gone and come when you are called. Remember you your cue, Mistress Page. Oh, I warrant me, if I do not act it, what's at me? <laughs> what is it then? Have I caught thee, my heavenly jewel? Why, now let me die, for I have lived long enough of oh, this blessed hour. Oh, sweet Sir John. Oh, Mistress Ford, I cannot cog, I cannot prate, Mistress Ford. Now shall I sin in my wish. I would thy husband were dead. I'll speak it before the best lord. I would make thee my lady. I, your lady, Sir John. <laughs> Alas, I should be a pitiful lady. Let the court of France show me such another. I see how thine eye would emulate the diamond. A plain kerchief, Sir John. My brow becomes nothing else, nor that well neither. Thou art a tyrant to say so. Thou wouldst make an absolute courtier, and the firm fixture of thy foot would give an excellent motion to thy gait in a semi-circled farthingale. <laughs> Believe me, there is no such thing in me. What made me love thee? Let that persuade thee there is something extraordinary in thee. But I love thee, none but thee, and thou deservest it. Do not betray me, sir. I fear you love Mistress Page. Thou mightest as well say I love to walk by the counter gate, which is as hateful to me as the reek of thine kill. Well, heaven knows how I love you, and you shall one day find it. <laughs> Oh, Mistress Ford, what have you done? You're, you're shamed, you're overthrown, you're undone forever. She shall not see me. I will ensconce me behind the arras. Pray you do so. What's the matter, Mistress Page? Your husband's coming hither, woman, with all the officers in Windsor to search for a gentleman. That he says is he now in the house by your consent to take an ill advantage of his absence. You are undone. Oh, tis not true, I hope. Oh, pray heaven it be not so that you have such a man here. But if you have a friend here, <laughs> him out, be not amazed. Call all your senses to you, defend your reputation, or bid farewell to your good life for ever. <laughs> what shall I do? There is a gentleman, my dear friend, and I fear not mine own shame so much as his peril. I had rather than a thousand pounds he were out of the house. Oh, for shame, your husband's here at hand. Bethink you of some conveyance. In the house, you cannot hide him. Oh, how you have deceived me. Look, here's a basket. 
if he be of any reasonable stature, he may creep in there, throw foul linen upon him, as if he were going to bucking. He's too big to fit in there. What shall I do? Let me see it. Let me see it. Oh, let me see it. <sighs> Alan, Alan, follow thy friend's counsel. Alan. <sighs> What's the joyful stuff that leave your letters, knight? I love thee and none but thee. Help me away. Let me in here. That I'll never I'll call your men, Mistress Ford, you dissembling knight. What's John? Robert, John. Go take up these clothes here. Quickly, carry them to the laundress and dutch it me. Quickly, come. Pray you, come near. If I suspect without cause, why then make sport at me? Then let me be your jest. I deserve it. How now, whither bear you this? What have you to do with they bear it? You were best meddle with buck washing. Buck? I would I could wash myself of the buck. 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 Buck! I <laughs> buck! I warrant you, buck! And of the season too it shall appear. Ladies and gentlemen, I have dreamed tonight. I will tell you my dream. Ascend my chambers, search, seek, find out. I'll warrant we'll unkennel the fox. Good Master Ford, be contented. You've wronged yourself too much. True, Master Page. Up, ladies and gentlemen. You shall see sport anon. Follow me, ladies and gentlemen. This is very fantastical humours and jealousies. By God, it's not the fashion of France. There's not jealous in France. Nay, follow him, ladies. See the issue of his search. I know not which pleases me better, that my husband is deceived, or Sir John. Oh, hang him, dishonest rascal. I would all of the same strain were in the same distress. I think my husband hath some special suspicion of Falstaff's being here, for I never saw him so gross in his jealousy till now. Mm, I will lay a plot to that. And we will have yet more tricks with Falstaff. His dissolute disease could scarce obey this medicine. Shall we send that foolish carrion mistress quickly to him and excuse his throwing into the water and give him another hope to betray him to another punishment? Oh, we will do it! Let him be sent for eight o'clock to have amends. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot find him. Maybe the knave brags of that which he cannot compass. Uh, heard you that? You use me well, do you, Master Ford? Aye, I do so. Heaven make you better than your thoughts. Oh, amen. You do yourself mighty wrong, Master Ford. I, I, I must bear it. If there be anybody in the house and in the chambers and the presses and the coffers, then heaven forgive me and my sins on the day of judgment. By God, wow, see, there is nobody's. Fie, fie, Master Ford, are you not ashamed? What spirit, what devil suggests this imagination? I would not have your distemper in this kind for the wealth of Windsor Castle. Your wife is as honest a woman as I desire among 5,000, nay, 500 too. By God, je vois, tis an honest woman. Well, I promised you dinner. Come, come, walk in the park. I pray you pardon me. I will hereafter make known to you why I have done this. Come, wife. Come, Mistress Page. Pray you pardon me. I pray heartily pardon me. Let's go, ladies. But trust me, we'll mock him. I do invite you all tomorrow morning to my house to breakfast. After we are birding together, I have a fine hawk for the bush. <laughs> Love. 
therefore no more turn me to him, sweet man. Alas, how then? Why, thou must be thyself. He doth object I am too great of birth, and that my state being galled with my expense, I seek to heal it only by his wealth. Besides these, other bars he lays before me. My riots past, my wild societies, and tells me tis a thing impossible, I should love thee but as property. Maybe he tells you true. No. Heaven so speed me in my time to come. Albeit, I will confess thy father's wealth was the first motive that I wooed thee, and yet wooing thee, I found thee of more value than stamps in gold or sums in sealed bags, and tis the very riches of thyself that now I aim at. Gentle Master Fenton, yet seek my father's love. Still seek it, sir. And if opportunity and humblest suit cannot attain it, why then, hark you hither. <clears throat> Break their talk, mistress, quickly. My kinsman shall woo for himself. Be not dismayed. No, he shall not dismay me. I care not for that, but that I am afeard. Hark ye! Hark ye! Master Slender would speak a word with you. I come to him. And how does good Master Fenton? Pray you a word with you. Mm. <clears throat> Mistress Anne, my cousin loves you. I, uh, that I do as well as I love any woman in Gloucestershire. <laughs> Uh, he will, he will maintain you like a gentlewoman. Good Mistress Shallow, let him woo for himself. Hmm. Mary, I thank you for it. I thank you for that good comfort. She calls you cos. I'll leave you. <clears throat> Master Slender. No. Good mistress. Anne. Anne, I'm fine. What is your will? Uh, truly, for my own part, I would little or, or nothing to do with you. Your father and my auntie hath made motions. If it be my luck, so if not, happy man be his dole. Now, Master Slender, mm. love him, daughter Anne. Um, <laughs> Why, how now? What does Master Fenton hear? You wrong me, sir, thus still to haunt my house. Sir, will you hear me? No! Good Master Fenton. Come, Mistress Shallow. Come, son, slender, in. Good Mistress Page, for that I love your daughter in such a righteous fashion as I do, perforce against all checks, rebukes, and manners, I must advance the colours of my love and not retire. But let me have your good will. Good mother, do not marry me to yond fool. Oh, I mean it not. Trouble not yourself. Good Master Fenton, I will not be your friend, nor enemy. My daughter, I will question how she loves you, and as I find her, so am I affected. Till then, fare you well, sir. She needs must go in. For her father will be angry. Farewell, gentle mistress. Farewell, Nan. This is my doing. Nay, I said, will you cast your child away on a fool and a physician? Look on Mr. Fenton. This is my doing. I thank thee, and I pray thee once tonight, give my sweet Nan this ring. Bears for thy pains. Now heaven send thee good fortune.
thrown in the Thames. I have been drowned, but that the water was shelvy and shallow. A death I abhor, for the water swells a man. What a thing should I have been when I'd been swelled? I should have been a mountain of mummy. Here's Mrs. Quickly, sir, to speak with you. Give your worship good morrow. Marry, sir, I come to your worship from Mistress Ford. Mistress Ford? I've had Ford enough. I was thrown into the Ford. I've had my belly full of Ford. Alas, the day, good art, that was not her fault. She does so take on with her men. They mistook their erection. So did I mine, to build upon a foolish woman's promise. Well, she laments her for it, that it would yearn your heart to see it. Her husband goes this morning a birding. She desires you to come to her between eight and nine, she'll make you amends, I warrant. Well, I will visit her, tell her so, and bid her think what a man is. Consider his frailty, and then judge of my merit. I will tell her. I marvel I hear not of Master Brooke. He sent me word to stay within. I like his money well. Oh, here he comes. Bless you, sir. Now, Master Brooke, you come to know what has passed between me and Ford's wife? That indeed, Sir John, is my business. Master Brooke, I will not lie to you. I was at her house the hour she appointed me. <laughs> and sped you, sir. Very ill favourably, Master Brooke. How so, sir? Did she change her determination? No, Master Brooke. But the peaking Cornuto, her husband, Master Brooke, dwelling in a continual larum of jealousy, comes me in the instant of our encounter, after we had embraced, kissed, protested, and as it were, spoke the prologue of our comedy. <laughs> and heals a rabble of companions, thither provoked and instigated by his distemper and forsooth to search his house for his wife's love. What? While you were there? While I was there. And did he search for you and could not find you? You shall hear. As good luck would have it comes in one mistress page, gives intelligence to Ford's approach, and in her invention and Ford's wife's distraction, they conveyed me into a buck basket. Basket. By the Lord, a buck basket <laughs> rammed me in with foul shirts and smocks, socks, foul stockings, greasy napkins. That, Master Brook, there was the rankest compound of smell that ever offended nostril. How long lay you there? Nay, you shall hear, Master Brook, what I have suffered to bring this woman to evil for your good. Being thus crammed in baskets, a couple of Ford's knaves, his hinds, took me on their shoulders, met the jealous knave, their master, at the door, who asked them once or twice what they had in their basket. Oh, I quaked for fear, lest the lunatic knave would have searched it. But <laughs> ordaining he should be a cuckold, held his hand. <laughs> well, on went he for a search, and away went I for foul clothes. <laughs> miracle to escape supplication. In the height of this bath, when I was more than half stewed in grease like a Dutch dish, to be thrown into the Thames and cooled, glowing hot in that surge, like a horseshoe. Think of that, kissing hot. Think of that, Master Brook. In good sadness, sir. I'm sorry that for my sake you have gone through all of this. My suit, then, is desperate. You will undertake her no more. Oh, Master Brook. I will be thrown into Etna as I have been into Thames, ere I will leave her thus. Her husband is this morning gone a birding. <laughs> I've received from her another embassy of meeting. Twixt eight and nine is the hour, Master Brook. Hmm. Tis past eight already, sir. Is it? Mm. I will then address me to my appointment. 
<laughs> you shall have a Master Brook. Master Brook, you shall cuck old Ford. Big Daddy six nine log three. <laughs> Is this a vision? Is this a dream? Do I sleep? The Master Ford awake? Awake, Master Ford! There's a hole made in your best coat, Master Ford. This is to be married. This is to have linen and buck baskets! Well, I will proclaim myself what I am. I will now take the lecher. He is at my house. He cannot escape me. It is impossible. He should! If I have horns to make one mad, let the proverb go with me. I'll be horn mad. Big Daddy 6 9, over and out. <laughs>
But on my word, it will serve him. She's as big as he is. And there's her thrunk hat and her muffler too. <laughs> go, go speak, Sir John. Mistress Page and I will look some linen for your head. <laughs> Quickly, run up, Sir John. Put the gown on the while. <laughs> oh, I would my husband saw him in this shape. He cannot abide the old woman of Brainford. He swears she's a witch, forbade her my house, and hath threatened to beat her. <laughs> it is my husband coming. Oh, aye, in good sadness he is, and talks of the basket too, howsoever he has had intelligence. We'll try that, for I'll appoint my men to carry the basket again, to meet him at the door with it, as I did last time. Oh, hang him, dishonest varlet. We cannot misuse him enough. We'll leave a proof by that which we will do. Wives may be merry, and yet honest too. <laughs> <laughs> Go, sirs, take the clothes up on your shoulders again. Your master is hard at door. If he bid you set it down, obey him. Quickly, dispatch. Aye, but if it's proved true, Master Page, have you any way to inform me again? Set down the basket, villains. Somebody call my wife. You in a basket. Oh, you pandily rascals. There's a knot, a ginge, a pack, a conspiracy against me. What, wife, I say? Come, come forth. See what honest clothes you sent forth to bleach him. Why, this passes, Master Ford. You are not to go loose any longer. You must be pinioned. Why, this is lunatics. This is mad as a mad dog. Indeed, Master Ford, this is not well indeed. Come here, the Mistress Ford. <laughs> Mistress Ford! The honest woman, the modest wife. The virtuous creature that hath a jealous fall to her husband. I suspect without cause, mistress, do I? Heaven be my witness you do if you suspect me of any dishonesty. <laughs> well said, brazen face. Hold it out. Come forth, sirrah. Oh, this passes. <clears throat> Sorry. <laughs> this passes. Are you not ashamed? Let the clothes alone! I shall find you an on! Uh, it is unreasonable. Will you take up your wife's clothes? Come away! Uh, empty the basket, I say! Why, man, why? <laughs> Master Page, as I am a man that was one conveyed out of my house yesterday in this basket, why may not he be there again? in my house. I am sure he is. My intelligence is true. My jealousy is reasonable. Pluck me out all the linen. By my fidelity, this is not well, Master Ford. This wrongs you. Well, he's not here I seek for. No, nor nowhere else but in your brain. Help me to search my house this one time. If I find not what I seek, Show no colour for my extremity. Let me forever be your table sport. Let them say of me, as jealous as Ford that searched the hollow walnuts for his wife's lemon. Satisfy me once more, once more search with me. What ho, Mistress Page? Come you and the old woman down. My husband will come into the chamber. Old woman? What old woman's that? Why? It's the... Why, it's my maid's aunt of Brainford. A witch, a queen, an old cozening queen. Have I not forbid her my house? She comes on errands, does she? She works by charms, by spells, by the figure, and such daubry as this is beyond our element. Come down, you witch, you hag, you. Come down, I say. Nay, hey, good sweet husband, good gentleman, let him not strike the poor woman. Out of my house, you witch! Out, out! I'll conjure you, I'll fortune tell you. Are you not ashamed? I think you killed the poor w woman. Hang her, witch. Uh, yeah, I know. I think the woman is a witch indeed. I like it not when a woman has a great beard, and I spy a great beard under that muffler. Who you follow, ladies and gentlemen? 
I'm beseeching you, follow. See, that's the issue of my jealousy. If I cry out thus upon no trail, never trust me when I open again. Let's obey his humour a little further. Come, ladies. Oh la la, les Anglais sont fous. Trust me, he beat him most pitifully. Oh, what say you? May we, with the warrant of womanhood and witness of good conscience, pursue him to any further revenge? Oh, the spirit of wantonness is sure scared out of him. Shall we tell our husbands how we have served him? Oh, yes, by all means, if it be but to scrape the figures from your husband's brains. If they can find it in their hearts, the poor unvirtuous fat knight shall be any further afflicted. We two shall still be the ministers. Pardon me why, henceforth to want I will help. I'm rather will suspect the sun with gold. And deal with wantonness. Now doth thy understand, and kin of us laid in heretic as firm as fair. Oh, tis well, tis well, no more. <laughs> Be not as extreme in submission and as in offense. But let our part go forward. Let our wives, yet once again to make us public sport, appoint a meeting with this old fat fellow, where we may take him and disgrace him for it. There was no better way than that they spoke of. <laughs> there is an old tale goes that Hearn the Hunter, sometime a keeper here in Windsor Forest, doth all the winter time at still midnight walk around about an oak with great ragged horns in a most hideous and dreadful manner. Why, yet there want not many that do fear in deep of night to walk by this Hearn's oak. But what of this? Mary, this is our device, that Falstaff at the oak shall meet with us, disguised like Herne with huge horns on his head. And in this shape, once you have brought him thither, what shall be done with him? What is, what is your plot? Um, <laughs> that likewise we have thought upon, and thus. Nan Page, our daughter, and three or four more of her growth, will dress as fairies. Elves and urchins and rounds of waxen tapers on their heads and rattles in their hands upon a sudden as she, Falstaff and I, are newly met, let them from forth the saw pit rush at once with some diffused song. Upon their sight, we too in great amazedness will fly. Then let them encircle him all about and fairy like to pinch the unclean knight and ask him why at that hour of fairy revel he so dares to tread in their sacred paths in shape profane. <laughs> And till he tells the truth, let the supposed fairies pinch him sound and burn him with their tapers. The, uh, the truth being known, we'll all present ourselves, disform the spirit, and mock him home to Windsor. <laughs> I will teach their children their behaviours, and I will be like a jack in apes also and burn the night with my tabor. <sighs> that will be excellent. I'll go by the... Uh, my nan will be queen of all fairies, uh, uh, finely attired in, in a robe of white. Ooh. White? That silk shall I go by. Yeah. Let us about it! It is admirable pleasures and very honest neighbours. Mine hostess, an old fat woman, even now with me, but she's gone. 
pray you, sir, was not the wise woman of Brainford? Aye, that it was, mine hostess. One that hath taught me more wit than ever I learned before in my life. And I paid nothing for it neither, but was paid for my learning. Now whence come you? From the two parties, forsooth. <laughs> the devil take one party and his damn the other. I have suffered more for their sakes, more than the villainous inconstancy of man's disposition is able to bear. And have they not suffered? Yes, I warrant speciously. What tellest thou me? I was beaten myself into all the colours of the rainbow. Oh. I to be apprehended for the witch of Brainford. But that my admirable dexterity of wit, mm -mm. admitting the action of the old woman delivered mm. me, the knave constable had set me in the stocks, in the common stocks, for a witch. No. Sir. Let me speak with you. You shall hear how things go, and I warrant to your content. Master Fenton, talk not to me. My mind is heavy. I will give over all. Yet hear me speak, assist me in my purpose, and as I am a gentleman, I'll give thee a hundred pound in gold more than your loss. I will hear you, Master Fenton, and I will, at the least, keep your counsel. From time to time I have acquainted you with the dear love I bear to the fair Anne Page, who hath mutually answered my affection so far forth as herself might be her chooser, even to my wish. Hark, good mine hostess, tonight at Hearn's Oak, just twixt twelve and one, must my sweet Nan present the fairy queen. While other jests are something rank on foot, her father hath commanded her to slip away with slender, and with him at Eton immediately to marry. She hath consented. Come, come, we'll count you the castle pit to see the light of our fairy. Remember, some slender, my daughter. I uh, sooth. I've spoken to her, and we have a nay word to know one another. I come to her in white and cry. Mumsy! She cries. Oh, yeah. And that's how we'll know one another. That's good, too. Um, yeah. But what needs your mumsy or her budget? The white will decipher her well enough. Day hath struck ten o'clock. The night is dark. Light and spirits will become it well. Heaven prosper our sport. No man is evil but the devil, and we shall know him by his horns. Oh, you are the I don't mean you're funny, Mr. Now, mistress, her mother, ever strong against that match, and firm for Dr. Caius, hath appointed that she shall likewise shuffle her away, while other sports are tasking of their minds, and at the deanery, where a priest attends straight to marry her. To this, her mother's plot, she seemingly obedient, likewise hath made promise to the doctor. Oh, mistress doctor! <laughs> so, my daughter is in green. Um, green, um, uh, oh, there, there. And <laughs> um, when you see your time, take her by the hand, away with her to the deanery, and dispatch it quickly. Eh? I know what I have to do. <laughs> oh, adieu. <laughs> Farewell, mademoiselle. <laughs> <sighs> My husband will not so much rejoice at the abuse of Falstaff as he will chafe at the doctor's marrying my daughter. But tis no matter. Better a little chiding than a great deal of heartbreak. Which means she did deceive? Father or mother? Both, my good hostess. <laughs> to go along with me. And here it rests. 
but you'll procure the vicar to stay for me at church twixt twelve and one, and in the lawful name of marrying, to give our hearts united ceremony. Well, husband, your device, I'll to the vicar. Bring you the maid, you will not lack a priest. So shall I evermore be bound to thee. Besides, I'll make a present recompense. draws on. Now the hot-blooded gods assist me. Oh, powerful love. That in some respects makes a beast a man, in some other, a man a beast. For me, I'm here a wind's a stag. Hmm? And the fattest, I think, in the forest. Well, who comes here? My doe? Sir John, art thou there, my dear, my male dear? My doe with the black scut, let the sky rain potatoes. Let there come a tempest of provocation. I will shelter me here. <laughs> Mistress Page has come with me, sweetheart. Divide me like a bribed buck, each a haunch. I will keep my sides to myself, my shoulders for the fellow of this walk, and my horns I bequeath your husbands. <laughs> Am I a woodman? <laughs> I like her and the hunter. <laughs> Why, now is Cupid a child of conscience. He makes restitution. As I am a spirit here, welcome. <laughs> Alas, what noise? <gasps> Heaven forgive our sins. Away! 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 I don't think the devil will not have me damned. Unless the oil that's inside me should set hell on fire. He would not else cross me thus. Breeze, black, grey, green and white, you, you moonshine revellers in shades of night, you orphan heirs of fixed destiny, attend your office and your quality, cry a hobgoblin, make the fairy oys. Elves list your name. Silence, you airy toys. Cricket to Windsor chimney shalt thou leap, where fires thou findest unraked and hearths unswept. There pinch the maids as blue as bilberry. Our radiant queen hates sluts and sluttery. They are fairies. He that speaks to them shall die. I'll, I'll wink and couch. No man their works must be. Click the link below. Click the link below. Click the link below. Click the link below. Click the link Windsor Castle elves within and out. Strew good luck authors on every scared room that it may stand till the perpetual doom. In state as wholesome as in state tis fit. Worthy the owner and the owner it. Away, disperse, but till tis one o'clock. Our dance of custom round about the oak. Of her and the hunter, let us not forget. Get off my screen, please. There you block hand in hand, yourselves in order, set. And twenty glowworms shall our lanterns be to guide our measure round about the tree. But stay! I smell a man of Middle Earth! Heavens defend me from this Welsh fairy, lest he transform me into a piece of cheese! Vile worm, thou wast overlooked even in thy birth! Ha! Where is apple support when you need it? With trial fire touch me his finger end. If he be chased, the flame will back descend and turn him to no pain. But if he start, it is the flesh of a corrupted art. This has cost its warranty. I can't get my money back. The trial come. 
come. Willis will take fire. <laughs> Better become the forest than the town. <laughs> <laughs> now, sir, who's a cuckold now? <laughs> Master Brook, Falstaff's a knave. Here are his horns, Master Brook. And Master Brook, he hath enjoyed nothing of boards but his buck basket, his cudgel, and twenty pounds of money, which must be paid to Master Brook. <laughs> sir John, we have had ill luck. We could never meet. I will never take you for my love again, but. I will always count you, my dear. <laughs> I do begin to perceive I made an ass. And, and these were not fairies. I, I was three or four times in the thought that they were not fairies. And yet the guiltiness of my mind, the sudden surprise of my powers, drove the grossness of the foppery into perceived belief, despite the teeth of all rhyme and reason, that they were fairies. Sir John Foster. Serve God and leave your desires, and the fairies will not pinch you. Well said, Fairy Hugh. And leave your jealousies too, I pray you. I will never mistrust my wife again till thou art able to woo her in good English. Why, Sir John, did you think that we have thrust virtue out of our hearts by the heads and shoulders and given ourselves over without scruple to hell that ever the devil could have made you our delight? What, a hodge pudding, a bag of flux? A puffed man! <laughs> Old, cold, withered, and of intolerable entrails. And one as slanderous as Satan. <laughs> and as poor as Job. <laughs> and as wicked as his wife. <laughs> I came into fornications and taverns and sack and wine and metheglins and swearings and stories and pribbles and prabbles. <laughs> well, I am your theme. You have the start of me. I'm not able to answer the Welsh flannel. Dejected. Ignorance itself is a plummet over me. Use me as you will. Oh, yet be cheerful, knight. Thou shalt eat a posset tonight at my house, where I shall desire thee to laugh at my wife, who now laughs at thee. Tell her Master Slender hath married my daughter. Whoa, ho, ho, Father Page. How now, son? Son, how now have you dispatched? Dispatched? I'll make the best in Gloucestershire know it would I were handle our else. Of what, son? I came yonder at Eton to marry Mistress Anne Page, and she's a great lovely boy. If I had been in the church, I'd have swinged him, or he should have swinged me. If I did not think it had been Anne, I would might never stir. It's a postmaster's boy. Upon my life, then, you took the wrong. What need you tell me that? If I had been married to him, for all he was in a woman's apparel, I would not have had him. Did I not tell you how you should know my daughter by her garments? I went to her in white and cried, Mom's day, and she cried, Budget, as Anne and I had appointed. And yet it was not Anne, but a postmaster's boy. George, be not angry. I knew of your purpose, turned my daughter into green, and she is indeed now with the doctor at the deanery, and they're married. <laughs> Where is Mistress Page? Bonjour. Bagar, I am cousined. I had married a garçon, a boy, a, a peasant bagar, a boy. It is not Anne Page. Bagar, I am cousined. Why did you not take her in green? I bagar, and tis a boy. Bagar, I will cleanse all Windsor. This is strange. Who hath got the right Anne? My heart misgives me. Here comes Master Fenton. How now, Master Fenton? Pardon, good father. Good my mother, pardon. Now, good mistress, how chance you went not with Master Slender? Why not you went with Mistress Doctor, maid? You do amaze her. Hear the truth of it. You would have married her most shamefully where there was no proportion held in love. The truth is, she and I, long since contracted, 
are now so sure that nothing can dissolve us. The offence is holy that she hath committed, and this deceit loses the name of craft which forced marriage would have brought upon her. Hmm. In love, the heavens themselves be guide the sight. Money buys lands, and wives are sold by fate. Well, what remedy? Fenton, heaven give thee joy. What cannot be eschewed must be embraced. <laughs> when night dogs run, all sorts of deer are chased. Well, I will muse no further. Good Fenton, <laughs> heaven give you many, many merry days. Now, good husband, let us every one go in and laugh this sport o'er a country fire, Sir John and all. Let it be so. Sir John, to Master Brook, you yet shall hold your word. For he tonight shall lie with Mistress Ford. Team, could we rewind this scene? I'm not sure what I was thinking. <laughs> Sweet, I need to get me charged up. Please, let me just one. And let's see what happens. Let's do it. Lovely, 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 lovely. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Rhythm, 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 rhythm. Yes, we have it. Lovely. It's recording. Okay, it's recording. I'm going away. Oh, interesting. Rhythm, 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 rhythm. All right, all right, lovely. I think that was the one. <laughs> Record. And I'm going to nailing it. All right, great. Fab, 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 fab. Rhythm, 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 rhythm. All right, all right. No interruptions, and we're recording. All right, team, and have fun. <laughs>